let's talk about zero knowledge proof. Now we are living in a world of information, right? Where data is a new oil. If data is so important, the entire economy is working on your data. Uh, that's right. I mean, think about all these companies. Of course, they provide you with the free service, but then they use your data to earn money. And that is okay, right? I mean, of course, if Google and Facebook says, we will use your data and we will give you free service, we are okay with it, provided they, I mean, of course, they put ads. But then if it is getting used only for the ads, that is okay. But then what if those ads are influencing you? What if those ads are... Uh, affecting you in your personal life as well, which is quite happening in the world of social network, which I can say. And then also your data is getting stored on their servers. In fact, they are not just using it, they are keeping it open for the entire world of hackers to hack it. In fact, you might be having uh, seen this news, right, where your data is getting leaked from a particular server on the dark web and anyone can access your data. So that's one issue. We don't want to share our data. I mean, of course, we, we need to share because that's how you can get the service. But then we don't want them to own your data. We want to own our data, right? Uh, okay, you might be thinking, hey, if I publish a photo on Facebook, you own it? Uh, not exactly. This company owns your data and they can use it for any purpose. And of course, we in different countries and different uh, continents, we have their own rules. We got GDPR now which says uh, a user will have the authority to publish content and they have the power to delete as well. Not applicable for all the countries, only applicable for uh, GDPR. Now, one of the solution for this problem where user want to own their data is with the help of blockchain, right? So because with the help of blockchain, we can achieve a decentralized internet instead of going for a centralized server where only few companies are holding your data. We can, we can move towards the decentralized internet with the help of blockchain. But then the solution which we got as of now is Bitcoin, we got Ethereum and both of them are public blockchain. It solves multiple problems. Now one of the problem is we are dependent on the fiat currency, right? So whenever you do transfer between two different countries, there is an exchange of uh, currency and of course they will charge you for that. And also government has a lot of power in terms of fiat currency and we don't want that, right? So Bitcoin says, hey, we can use one currency for the entire world. Now the only problem is when you talk about banks and whenever you do a transaction using a bank server, only you know your data. Not, not everyone will, will be knowing it, right? Of course, bank will know uh, your transactions, bank employees will know your transactions, but not the other people. What happens with the Bitcoin network? Now, Bitcoin is a public blockchain, which means anyone can see those, those transactions. Yes, your address is pseudo-anonymous, but that's the thing, right? It is pseudo-anonymous. It's not completely anonymous. If I can get your public address, I can see all the transactions which you have done with other people. And that's where we say, hey, that's not exactly what we wanted, right? We want privacy here. Now, in other terms, not just other people, Right? There are a lot of people who are waiting to see the data on the blockchain network. But what about those people who have the power to see your data even before it goes on the blockchain network? I'm talking about the miners. I mean, thinking about Bitcoin, which is still on POW, where you have to do mining things as well. Now, when you talk about mining, what happens is all this data, all this transaction before going into blockchain, it comes into a mempool. Now, as a miner, they have the access of this data. Now, you'll be saying, what's wrong with that? Now, first of all, this is unencrypted data. And second, miners can see the data. Of course, it is unencrypted and they can use it for their own purpose. See, first of all, there is a concept of MEV where miners can get the advantage of the mempool uh, with the transaction fee and the data as well. But they can use this data for other purposes as well. Example, let's say there's a transaction of huge amount of Bitcoins getting transferred. And now they know, now with this transfer of Bitcoins, the price of Bitcoin may go up. So they might buy more Bitcoins. So they can use it for their own purpose, right? So what if you want to have this data where you will make it encrypted? So can you encrypt the data? Yes, you can encrypt the data. The only problem is if you encrypt the transaction, how will miners verify it? And not just one miner, we have, we have multiple miners, we have multiple nodes who will verify your transaction. And that's the problem, right? So what if you can prove a transaction is valid without sharing the information? I know that's tricky, right? And that's where we have a concept of zero knowledge. So what I'm talking about is, let's say we have two people here. This is the first one. Now let's say this person is a prover and this person here is a verifier, right? And if you can see the definition of zero knowledge proof on Wikipedia, it says 
Azure Knowledge Proof or Azure Knowledge Protocol is a method by which one party, which is a prover, can prove to the other party, which is a verifier, that a given statement is true, while the prover avoids conveying any additional information apart from the fact that the statement is true. Let me give an example here. So let's say you want to book a movie ticket. And of course, if it is a A-rated movie, let's say it's a horror movie, you have to prove that you are 18 plus. Now the way you do that, depend upon which country you stay, example, I'm in India. So what we do is we share our Aadhaar card, right, which is your identity. Now in your Aadhaar card, apart from the age, apart from your date of birth, we have more information. First of all, you have your name, you have your address, and of course it will also have that number, the Aadhaar number. And it will also have your age. I mean, you will say that's okay, right? Not exactly. See, to book a movie ticket for an A-rated movie, you just have to be 18 plus. You don't have to share your exact age. So basically, you don't want to share your data, but still you want to prove that you're 18 plus. I know that's tricky, right? So how will you prove something without sharing the information? And that's why we have zero knowledge proof. So in this case, we have a prover and we have a verifier. So prover has some information or has some knowledge. So let's say prover has some knowledge here. And then prover has to prove to the verifier that prover has this knowledge without sharing the knowledge. Okay, and to prove that, let me give you an example. So can we get Hirsch here? And by default, everyone knows that, right? Men are by default colorblind, that's what I believe. And I can, sh I can show you these two sticky notes here. And for me, both are of same color. I mean, trust me. <laughs> okay, both, for, for me, both are same color, but Hirsch believes that men are by default not colorblind. So Hirsch can differentiate between those two colors. So for, for you, these are two different colors. Right. Okay. Uh, how will you prove that these are two different colors? Don't tell me which colors these are because I can't see. I can. I can. I think both are pink. I'm not sure the other colors. What is the other color? So you have to prove that these are two different colors. Okay. And you're not bluffing because I can see these are two different, two same colors, right? So what I will do is uh, I will take these cards behind me and then maybe I will swipe it or not. You just have to say if I have swiped it or not. Okay. And you can see this color as well. And let me know in the comment section if you can see. And again, this, this is a very common example in terms of zero knowledge proof. So let's try this. Okay, I'm, try, I'm just trying this. Okay. Is it swapped? No. You can check also. Hirsch says no, and he's right. Maybe this, this is, he's just bluffing. Let's try once more. Swapped? No. Swapped? Yes. Okay, so this is three times correct answer. What if I do this hundred times? So the probability of Hirsch being right here or Hirsch being honest here is, I mean, of course, it goes up based on how many iterations you do, right? So this is where you are trying to prove something without sharing the information. Of course, you can also write some numbers here or maybe I'm colorblind so I can differentiate with these two numbers or these two colors and I don't even know what these colors are, right? Or maybe both are pink for me, uh, but you, for you, it is a different color, right? And Hush is able to prove that if I do multiple swapping. You can also do it with numbers and I will share the links for the uh, different videos available on that. Thank you so much, Hush. Now it has a lot of use cases, it's not just for colors, right? It can be used at multiple places. Example, we have used for age. Uh, the second example we can take it for is banking. Let's say if I want to take a loan from a bank. So when you go to take a loan from a bank, of course you have to show your salary slip. You have to show your bank statement to prove that you can repay the loan. And that's tricky, right? So just to check if you are eligible for a loan, you have to share all your financial statements. I'm not comfortable sharing my bank statement with the bank manager, I mean the other bank manager. How can you prove? I mean, if you can use zero knowledge proof here to share the information without, or to prove that you are eligible for the loan without sharing the information. So we can use it for multiple use cases, right? And this is very effective. So go, going back to the blockchain part, how can you make the data which is, which is there in the mempool encrypted and it is verifiable without sharing the information? And we can do that with the help of GKP, which we have talked about, which is zero knowledge proof. And it is already implemented with the help of Zcash, right? So you can see it is already implemented with the help of Zcash. So when you talk about Bitcoin, Bitcoin is good, uh, but then all the transactions are by default transparent. I mean, it is not encrypted, right? So anyone can see it. But what about Zcash? Zcash says everything will be encrypted and no one can see it. So when you say it is encrypted, that means it is you are getting privacy. Now the problem is, in the blockchain world, we are thinking that everything will be moving from the web 2.0 to web 3.0, right? Where you'll be building decentralized applications. So you have Ethereum there to make application. But again, the same problem is Ethereum is transparent. Of course, you can do programming there, but data is transparent there. 
how about using getting some new technology something like alio it's already there and alio says you can build application which is truly private so it is it achieves high privacy and you can also do programming on that